Okay, so this is what we're wanting to achieve. Put the lathe in forward drive. Engage the feed. Disengage the feed. Tumble reverse. Engage the feed. Carriage is going backwards away from the headstock. Disengage the feed. Tumble reverse. Carriage comes towards the headstock. Boom. The lathe is uh, chopped up currently, temporary home, I'm having a reorganise. This is the Sealy SM27 variant of the lathe, it's a, a close relation of the Clark CL430 and it's not much of a distant relative of the Warco. The new tool lathe, very similar again. And I think there's some shared genetics with the Chester lathe also. It's a slideshow from back in the day before I had video. Or I worked out how to use it anyway. Okay, so you bright boys have taken off the chuck uh, and ripped out the spindle with the bearings, the hoogie moogies and the bits and bobs. The parts diagram online, easily available, but there are no blueprints to give you measurements. So you can see how it comes to pieces, but you have to measure it yourself. In a straight gear chain, the input and output gear determine the change in speed. Intermediate gears only change the direction of rotation. One intermediate idler gear reverses the direction two gears maintain the direction. With limited space I had to come round the head to make essentially two gear chains. I made a Frankenstein mock-up for the gear carriage for feasibility. By moving the lower fixed gear chain stud and pivoting around it uh, the plan was hatched. The casting was rough with the bare minimum of machining for function. I couldn't find blueprints online, so I measured relative positions with uh, calipers and rulers. On this metric machine, I would expect whole number metric measurements. I have seen a complex gearbox fabrication slotted into the space under the lead screw drive selector. That was very complicated and not feasible. Another scheme had an idler which you took in and out, but wasn't permanently fixed. The headstock is held by a couple of grub screws onto the dovetail and two bolts from underneath. Headstock alignment is achieved by adjusting the grub screws and locking with the bolts. Crude, but effective. The spindle bearings were good quality, no need to replace those. And inside the headstock casting, it was all clean, there was no grit or debris, which was good. The plan here is to strip out everything from the headstock because I'm going to machine the back surface of it and I only have to clean it out anyway. This is the high-low gear selector with the ball detent uh, and linkage. It slides paired gears on a splined shaft. It's low rotation speed stuff, so it's just machined bearings. The finish of my machine was pretty good with just a few raggy edges and burrs, which are honed off before reinstall. I've strap clamped the headstock to the mill using the machined spindle faces for alignments, then packed up underneath with shims. The spur gears are sat there to get an idea of what we're aiming for. The first machining process was to deck it to give me a flat playing field. The cast dust is gritty and horrible, so we've sealed everything up as good as we can, but the casting is good. I've milled a new location for the lower gear chain fixed stud. The flange size 
is reduced to stay within the outer edge, there was enough meat to uh, prevent perforating the casting. I can recover the old location if I need to and I made a completely new stud as well. So we can revert back to factory. Rebuild the headstock on the bench, put the headstock back on, align the spindle with a Morse taper test bar and clock gauges, that takes time. For the jockey wheel support plate, we've cut away the corner and reinstalled it. I now made an accurate template for the carrier plate. It had to rotate, stay in one plane, hold pinions uh, for the gears to run through, so gauge plate was essential. To get the idler gear positions, I put the whole thing together, super glued the idler gears in the correct place, then drilled through. I made a new stud for the lower gear change banjo. I drilled and cross drilled it for oiling. This is the headstock side of the carrier plate with the sprung latch uh, installed. Somewhere around here it starts to become a bit of a brain tease. There's heaps of bits but if you go at it one by one it eventually all comes together. The spare gears I bought I had to reface them because they were too thick. I bored some of them out uh, and made press fit bearings that went on pinions. All fiddly, none of it was drawn out. By this stage I'm just fiddling it and winging it, making it work, but the concept was sound. The jockey wheel supporting plate has been cut back here to allow room for the tumble reverse plate to swing into. This is the new gear chain fixed stud. It's longer, it's got little thrust bearing in there. The original, the gears were held on with a, a little C-clip. It was cross-drilled with an oiler on the end. The new one's cross-drilled with an oiler on the end and we can return the machine to the original configuration if we want it. This is the tightest for space on the slow speed with the jockey wheel in. Fire it up. Pull the forwards. Turn the reverse, turn the forwards. Here's the long belt in the worst position for the gear chain. Now we're going a bit quicker now, aren't we? Oh, we're going a bit close. Right. Change direction. Change direction. So we've got room. Let's see where we go here. Oh, that's coming towards me a fair lick. Thank you. 
reverse the motor, start it, and bye bye City Arizona. Thank you for watching. Give it a go. Good luck.